Hey, what's up? This is Sifu Cuddle, and in this video, I want to talk to you guys about this new beautiful sword that I have from LK Chen. This is the Song Hand Dao. Now this is another sword from LK Chen, and maybe you saw my Flying Phoenix review, the Han Dynasty Jian. Uh, that was also from LK Chen, and I've been lucky enough to get another blade and review it and kind of tell you guys not only about the blade and the history, but what to expect when you use it. Now, the thing that I really like about how LK Chen does this is that he'll actually go out and measure and handle and hold actual weapons from the time. So he's been able to actually handle these real true swords that have been, you know, upwards of a thousand years, even older than that, and actually have the time to work on it to make the best reproduction possible. That's something that a lot of the big knife and sword companies can't make. And oftentimes they, they can only do their best impression by looking at a picture. And I found that really affects it. And that's why if you saw my Flying Phoenix review, it was very positive and the same thing is going to go for this. I really love this blade and I'll tell you more about that in a minute. So some quick history on this one. This sword comes from the Song Dynasty. Now that lasted from about 960 AD all the way to 1279 AD in the span of about 300 years. Now what's really special about that time was there was a lot of art, a lot of literature, a lot of vibrance and, and, and just expression was going on. So um, among things, you'll know one of the Chinese classics about the 108 heroes, uh, Outlaws on the Marsh, The Water Margin, All Men Are Brothers, whatever you call it, that actually came out from the Song Dynasty. So it's kind of cool to picture uh, some of the characters using weapons like this. Now also during the Song Dynasty, there was a military manual which recorded um, which weapons were used in combat and they listed eight Dao or eight blades. Now, seven of those blades were actually long-handled weapons, something similar to like a guando. But there was only one that was a sidearm sword, and that was this one. And it was just called a hand dao or a hand blade. And that's what makes this really unique because this is one of the main things, one of the main swords that was used during the Song Dynasty. Now, I was super happy with the shipping. And this is something I want to mention before we even look into the blade and the sword and the construction and everything else itself. This arrived within five days of the shipping notification. So it arrived very quickly from China. I had no problems shipping it into Switzerland, which can often be a problem. I can't even get things from Amazon here. These showed up super quick, no problems, no extra paperwork. I was really pleased with that. The blade itself was wrapped in a sword bag that is beautiful black and it has uh, golden phoenixes and dragons um, embroidered into it and it also has this uh, golden cord that you can use to tie the bag so that's also really nice too. Okay now first impressions are this thing is super nice. I couldn't be more pleased with this one. It You're going to notice if you get this it may be heavier than the typical broadsword you're used to. If you've been training in Chinese martial arts and you've been working with a Dao like this, you're going to notice that this is almost twice the weight of it. This particular sword that I have, this is my usual training sword. This weighs 0.6 kilos and this, this sword weighs 1.1 kilos. That's a blade only, that's out of the scabbard. So it, the first thing you're gonna notice, it's a bit heavier. But with that said, it's made it's made to be a real weapon like it's it's sharp it's made to chop through things it's made to really carry its own weight so you may have a little bit of a learning curve to work with the new weight of it to build up some strength in your forearm and wrist but honestly it doesn't take long and you'll be very happy that you did it now the scabbard itself i really like this style it's a very simple uh it's just simple natural wood it matches the shape of the blade itself. So you'll notice that it has a little bit longer here, a little bit shorter here. It's a very nice look to it. And it's wrapped in cord, wrapped in black cord in two places. This can be for when you're drawing the sword, you actually know where your hand can grab and you know that you're not gonna try to grab this side of it. 
That's because there's no clips, there's no belt clips or any kind of things like that to hang the sword. It's just a plain scabbard. Now this is the one thing that um, is, I would say, speculation. It's not the most, we can't really actually say what's the most historically accurate for this sword because no scabbards survived from the Song Dynasty. Now you might be thinking, okay, well, what about previous dynasty swords that do have scabbards that survived? Well, the reason for most of that is how it was preserved. Um, sometimes they were buried with rich, you know, uh, people and they had, a, you know, it was buried in a tomb. But also one of the big things is they were painted and lacquered. Now, the wooden scabbards didn't survive from those dynasties either. However, the lacquer of the scabbard did. And with many layers, it actually just preserved what the outside of the scabbard looked like. So people could actually see what that was. Perhaps during the Song Dynasty, they just went straight to uh, just natural materials, not a lot of lacquer, and that's why you don't have anything that was preserved over time. I, again, I love this look, the simple, just clean, uh, natural wooden look. Uh, I like the bright, the lighter wood too. It's a really nice uh, color, you know, in, as compared to like a darker wood. There is an article by Professor Ben Judkins, and he calls it Danish modern meets Kung Fu. So you get that kind of <laughs> minimalist look to it. But again, I really like that. And if you've seen some of my other videos where I've built wooden weapons or the horse bench or wooden dummies, I, I love the look of natural wood. Now, the one thing I will mention um, that I've noticed on mine as compared to other people's swords that they've received is that Mine has a light finish. This is more of a matte or a satin finish, and it's not high gloss on the scabbard. And I actually really prefer that. So um, I, think it, I think when you have, especially with the fittings, where the guard has just also like a matte finish, it, it's not really super glossy, it's not super shiny. I think it takes away from the overall feeling of the sword where you have uh, a scabbard that's just really too shiny. Let's talk about the handle. The handle is really comfortable. You, you can see it's thinner this way, it's thicker this way, so when you grab it, you know exactly where the blade edge is. Now, because again, there's no clip or anything, you, you, you can pick this up and not be sure which side is the blade. There's a really cool way to index that, and that's if you look at the shape of the guard, it's actually what they call like a peach seed guard or it's this teardrop shape. And you can just take your index finger, rest it on there, and you know exactly where the blade edge is. You can index that very quickly. You'll also notice that the coverage of the hand is a little bit different here um, from, uh, if, from the back of the guard to the front of the guard, it covers all of my knuckles together. So that's a really nice thing too. Now, uh, it does get slimmer as you get closer to the pommel and it's thicker towards the, the actual guard itself and the blade itself. Um, for me, I've noticed that I've had to make some, a couple of extra adjustments to move back up. It's not anything major. My hand doesn't slip all the way down, but having a grip that tapers down does kind of slightly encourage that. So you'll find that with that extra length, you have a little bit more room to let the hand walk. Uh, of course, you could let it, if, if you were worried about that, you probably would just end up at the pommel itself. Now, the ring pommel, there has been no 100% answer for this. Why yes, why no? So it's, it is kind of left up to think there's some really good theories about it. Um, personally, I think that this has a lot to do with how blades were stored, especially when you're mass producing them. It's easy enough just to hang them on a long peg in an armory. And that's things that we've seen with later blades and something I will talk about in just a minute. Now here's the fit and finish. It's not cord wrapping all the way up to the top, which it's really not that big of a deal to me. I, I'm not bothered by it. Further away you go, you don't even notice that it's not there. But it sits in here really well. So I actually like this. I can shake this. It's not going to fall out. I don't have to, I don't have to worry about it. And it's been, I've been taking it out, putting it away, using it, taking it out, putting it away, all of that stuff for quite a while now, and it still uh, sets in really well. So now look at this beauty. 
it's a nice bright finish on the blade as well. So this is something different than you'll see in a lot of LK Chen swords that have that kind of Damascus look or the pattern weld uh, on it. But this is just a bright, clear blade. It what it does have. It was clay tempered, so there is a slight um, line that you can see along here or a hamon. Um, it's really nice, and that's consistent across all blades and all that I've seen in other uh, review videos as well. Um, one of the things you might be wondering, though, is when you look at this blade, uh, you might be wondering which edge is the sharp edge. Well, it's actually the long edge here, and that might be something that you weren't expecting because typically you see with like um, the Tangdo or the or even Japanese swords, you would have the blade edge along here. Well, that's not the case. This one, the blade edge is the longer edge so that you have more cutting real estate, <laughs> okay? So you have a lot more cutting edge here. However, another thing that may be misleading in that same direction is the way that this metal fitting is right here. Typically, when you look at like a Kwon Do or long-handled uh, weapon, if it has any kind of a metal fitting like this, this part usually goes along the spine. And in this case, it doesn't. And that comes down to this being a one-to-one -one replica. This is based on one single sword that came from the Song Dynasty. So there may have been swords that had more of a scalloped tip, and there may have been swords that were sharpened this way, though I highly doubt that. Um, for the most part, it's going to be the longer edge here. And again, with this piece right here, this is common across quite a few different swords. So this is something that you would see from the period itself. Now the weight distribution is for chopping. This is a robust blade. So you're gonna find it's a little bit further out from the handle, but this doesn't go for every sword. So don't do that, that's just in the movies, okay? <laughs> It has great distal taper. It is very thick towards the handle and then it thins out all the way towards the tip. And the edge profile, if you can see that here, I'll get my head out of the way. It is really nice. It is made to chop. So this is a wonderful sword for that. Now, I did mention before, if you've worked with any kind of a, a different dao for like martial arts training, if you've been working with something like this, you're going to find that it is heavier, but that's because this is still flexible. Even though my sword is not as flexible as a wushu sword and not as light as a wushu sword, it is still very light, very flexible, and this is not. This is made to chop. Now, it is a T10 tool steel, and it's had a differential heat treatment. And this is really important because of this being such a long and such a uh, heavy sword. With that forward momentum, it really wants you to chop into things, right? And that's what makes it the differential heat treatment so important, is that the tip or the edge of the sword is going to be firm and maintain that edge, but the spine of the sword is going to be flexible. And this is really important because, again, if you're swinging and you have poor edge alignment or you rotate a little bit, you're going to um, smack that object rather than cut through it. And if your sword is brittle, you're going to break it. So having that flexibility is going to have some allowance for mistakes. Now, this sword was a battlefield sword, and it was meant to be used in a single hand. And... Um, I've been looking at some of the armor that was used in the Song Dynasty, and I would say most confidently this was not an anti-armor sword. Um, the way that they had, you know, everything covered, this is probably not going to chop through that. So I would say this is used against uh, times when people don't have armor, and it's used as a utility weapon. This is your sidearm. This is not your main weapon. Uh, that's why you have pole arms. That's why you have your Kwon Do. That's why you have your spear because those are the ones that are going to do the most on the battlefield. In case it breaks, in case you find yourself in a closed in area, or in case you find that you need to chop some things out of the way, clear some space, that's when you're going to be using this. Okay. And of course you can use it to fight back if, if, you, if it needs to be done. So even though this was used as a single-handed weapon, you can absolutely use it with two hands. The length of the handle is comfortable enough that you can hold it with both and you're not feeling too uh, compressed between. The pommel doesn't hit against your palm. 
it's, it's a really comfortable grip. And that's something that you can use when you're practicing uh, forms like the Da Dao or even if you're going to be practicing like Ghost Head Broadsword. Now, I do want to mention a couple things about those. So this is an antique big blade Da Dao that was used in the, the 30s and used during uh, uh, back in the World War times. And techniques were taught to troops as an anti-bayonet weapon. And there's some famous stories about the Chinese uh, actually chasing out Japanese armies just armed with these. And I have to say, swinging this one around, even though it's, it's, it's a shorter and it's, um, this one is one kilo exactly, this is 1.1, even though this is lighter, it doesn't feel as comfortable and like it's really forward chopping and it puts a lot of extra pressure on my wrists. So I found that this actually has a much better weight distribution and of course it's better made. These were mass produced and they were made so that you could just throw it on your back, go chop, chop wood, chop people, chop bayonets. Uh, this was just a very utility weapon and um, I honestly think that these were made uh, so that you didn't have to have skill. You could just put this in anybody's hands and if they swing it hard enough, it'll do its job. But I found that in all honesty, this one is a lot more comfortable to use. So obviously you can see there's a huge difference in the length of the blade. And one of the things that I think is really important to note here is even though obviously this one was made recently, this one was made this year and this one was made, you know, almost a hundred years ago, the, this is the earlier design. So you can see a lot of things that stuck around with the Song Dynasty sword that made it all the way into the Qing Dynasty and the Republican era. So one of, one of them is being the ring pommel. The other is, yeah, still having a cord wrapped handle. And you can see that it did fan out and curve out at this point, but it still maintains that the longer part of the blade is the edge. Now the next question is, does it cut? Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I know I'm only cutting water bottles, uh, but I can assure you that this cuts through just as easily into harder materials like bamboo or even tatami mat rolls. It's just that I don't have access to those right now. So you'll have to take my word for it. All right, so that's it. I love this sword and I hope you guys get the chance to use something like this as well. Um, I'll leave links in the description down below to the site, to where you can purchase it, uh, as well as other reviews from other prominent YouTubers and people that have handled it from different backgrounds so you can really get a full rounded uh, view about this. I can't recommend it enough and if you guys have picked one up, uh, drop a comment down below. Let me know how you like it and uh, if you have any questions on it, hopefully I can answer something about it <laughs> with my limited knowledge and experience. But um, I hope this has been a good video for you guys and I really do hope you get the chance to work with this because it is a real treat. Till next time, this is Sifu Cuddle. Thanks for watching. Bye.